Every day, around 1,500 flights go from U.S. to Europe. And out of these, most flights across Atlantic Ocean use only this particular route. It's a sort of invisible highway for airplanes, where all planes fly in front and behind each other at a distance of 60 kilometers. Sideways, their distance is 30 kilometers. While in terms of altitude, they are only 1,000 feet above and below each other. That is, about 305 meters. You must have experienced it yourself, or you must have seen a video where multiple planes are very close to each other in the sky. This is especially seen in flights from the US to Europe, in which this invisible highway is used. But the question is that when the entire sky is empty, why do pilots stay close to each other and use only this particular route in a very risky situation? Welcome back once again to World Update video. Viewers, this invisible highway of planes was discovered nearly a hundred years ago. In 1920, a Japanese meteorologist named Wasaburu Oishi sent several weather balloons into the sky for the purpose of research. Research. He noticed that there is an invisible force in the sky at an altitude of 30,000 to 40,000 feet, which takes the balloons towards the east at a very high speed. The world did not pay much attention to his research. However, after 25 years, during World War II, an incident occurred that made the world take the research of the Japanese scientist seriously. In April 1945, six friends went on a picnic to the state of Oregon, United States. So they saw a huge balloons lying there in the forest. They dragged it in excitement but they didn't know what risk they were going to take. There was a bomb in the balloon which exploded due to shaking, and those six friends lost their lives. Similar incidents like this were reported in various parts of the U.S. as well. Upon investigation, it was discovered that these balloons had been launched by Japan over 10,000 kilometers away from the other side of the Pacific Ocean. Not just two or four, but Japan had launched around 9,000 balloon bombs, 300 of which landed in their target use, Japan took advantage of Wasaburu Oishi's research to launch these balloons which reached the U.S., floating in strong winds. Since then, the tunnel of fast-moving winds at 30,000 to 40,000 feet is referred to as jet streams. Almost the whole year, these winds travel towards the east at a maximum speed of 250 kilometers per hour. They have been noticed in the northern hemisphere. They travel in the form of a tube, which is several hundred kilometers wide and four kilometers thick, and the surprise the surprising thing is that they don't even have a fixed location. Scientists believe that these strong winds are created due to the temperature difference between poles and equators. When the warm air from the equator moves towards the poles, it gives rise to jet streams. But if air travels from the equator to the North Pole, it should go from south to north. But why do these jet streams travel from west to east? The main reason for this is said to be the rotation of the Earth. Our Earth is rotating in anti-clockwise direction from west to east east at a speed of about 1,600 km per hour. In the northern and southern hemisphere, these strong winds must travel towards the poles, but the rotation of the Earth is forcing them to travel from west to east. Now let's come to our main question. For traveling from the U.S. to Europe over the Atlantic Ocean, why do 15,000 planes use only one path in a day? In 1952, airline pilots began to pay attention to get jet streams. Just as jet streams are found over the Pacific Ocean, they are also present over the Atlantic Ocean during flights from the U.S. to Europe. During the journey, the pilots deliberately took the planes into the jet streams because the winds at 250 kilometers per hour were pushing the plane forward. This increased the airplane's speed, reduced turbulence, and notably saved fuel as well. Similarly, if going to the U.S. from Europe, then the pilots would use any other route but stay away from the jet streams because now these winds were in the opposite direction, which had a reverse effect on the planes. Time passed and airliners' industry grew rapidly. Allopilots have now started using jet streams for traveling east war. But the biggest problem was the increasing traffic in the jet streams, which could also cause accidents. It is used to be the work of air traffic controller ATC to make the route plan of the flights according to the weather so that no planes collides with each other within the jet streams. We all know that the raiders on the air traffic control tower detect the location of the planes. On the basis of this location, which plane will fly at what altitude and what speed, all this can be managed by ATC only after knowing their location. But the problem is that the range of these radars is not that high. It can detect the position of planes within a maximum range of 128 kilometers. That is, assume that the range of New York ATC's radar is only equal to the circle whose radius is 128 kilometers. Planes disappear from radar range as soon they go outside this circle. So now how will ATC know the location of the plane? The ocean is spread over thousands of kilometers. The planes flying over it and send their position every 
14 minutes to the control tower through satellite or high radio frequency. But in these 14 minutes, ant accident can happen. That is why in 1965, a new system was introduced. It is called Northern Atlantic Organized Track System, or also known as NAT.OTS. In this system, multiple route paths were created for flights going to America and Europe, which are controlled by four main centers in the Atlantic Ocean. The first is the New York Station, which control this section. In the second place is Canada's Gander, Newfoundland, which controls this region, Santa Maria Oceanic control this part, and Shanwick controls the northern part. NAT OTS has a total of six routes named from NAT A to NAT F. Before takeoff, pilots are allocated one of these routes, or even during the flight. If there is a lot of traffic on a route, they are shifted from one route to another route. These routes are specially designed so that the traffic is split, and the planes going to Europe can get a tailwind. Tailwind refers to the wind that comes from behind the aircraft and pushes it forward to make these routes more efficient. The location of jet streams is observed twice a day with the help of weather satellites, and then the routes are optimized accordingly. As you can see in this live wind map, it is the USA on the left, Europe on the right, and the entire Atlantic Ocean in the middle. If seen at sea level, the wind speed in the center of the Atlantic Ocean is 22 kilometers per hour. The entire white portion you're seeing is actually the jet stream that extends from the USA to Europe. The six routes of NAT.OATS are positioned within this jet stream, so that even if the plane's location isn't update to ATC for five to 10 minutes, the autopilot system can maintain its speed, altitude, and latitude according to the conditions of the NAT OTS routes. This is the reason that the planes going to Europe seem to fly only on this route. To confirm this, let's turn to the live plane tracker. Here in this part of the Atlantic, all the planes going to Europe are traveling along the line, while the returning planes can be seen far away from the jet stream. Viewers, I have tried my best to explain this content in simple terms. Hope you have understood this short video of World Updates. Thank you so much for your kind comments. See you in the next video.